Hello everyone. For those of you just joining us, we're making a handle to operate the quill on this milling machine. The quill resides within the vertical head just here. If I put this socket on this shaft that comes out the side and then push the power bar down, you can see that the head of the milling machine comes down and that part is the quill. Now what I'd like to be able to do is operate this like a bench drill, so have a handle here with multiple handles. And that's what this uh, video is about. Now I've started work on the hub and in the previous video we have drilled a hole and bored the hole out to the correct size we hope and also made the hub into the right shape which has an angled surface on one side just here. Now at the end of the previous video I said that what we were going to be doing is machining or modifying the shape of the hole that's going to take the locking plate because this hub hopefully will lock onto this shaft. Now when I came across to the milling machine to do the milling on this uh, this hole to modify its shape, it dawned on me that the indexing head was already set up on here. And we need the indexing head for machining the four holes that are going to take the four handles that come out the side of the hub. So what I'm going to do is do the machining for the four handles first, and then once that's over, we will then modify the shape of the hole. Lots to do. <laughs> so we best get on with it. Here is a close-up of our assembly. The silver piece at the rear is the extension piece we put on. Uh, the black piece is our hub. Now the extension was there so we could hold the hub in the lathe chuck and also the chuck of the indexing head when it came to machining uh, the hub itself. In the last video we machined this angled surface here and we also drilled and then bored the hole in the center at the front. Now what we want to do is mark out where our stems are going to go for the handles. Now there will be four stems and they will be on this angled surface. Now there's nothing really important here uh, for high degree accuracy so this is all going to be marked out by eye. Now it's all going to stem from this line here. This is the center line which runs through that hole. Now I have actually marked it out already and this is the procedure that I went through to get the holes roundabout in the right place. Now we follow this centre line up here from that hole because we want our handles to be 45 degrees each side of that hole. So our centre line comes up and it comes just there, I move it to the top. So try to ignore all the other lines that are on here at the moment. Where our line came over the top, I put a little dot here and then used a centre finder to mark a line all the way across the rear of the extension down here. So that gave me one centre line. I now want a second centre line, but at 90 degrees to the first. So just here, two millimetres in from the surface, I put a little dot uh, with a centre punch. I did the same on this end. And now, using the dividers here, I put one end of the divider in that hole, and then I drew that stroke there. I went across the other side, did that stroke there, put the divider into that divot, and then poured that arc, and then that arc. Now that gave me two crosses. We we'll turn this around 90 degrees, so we've already got that line, and now this second centre line we find using the centre finder, and then we go through the centre of the two crosses and then make our second centre line. So that gave me this centre line and that centre line. Now I wanted these two, and I did it in the same way as uh, before. So the, the second centre line that I had drawn, I made a centre dot just here, centre dot just there. So that gave us four centre dots. And then using those centre dots, I then brought out that cross and that cross, moved across to here, did that cross and that cross, then back to this one where I crossed here, here, and then from that spot I did this and that. And that gave me four more crosses. And all I had to do then was join the crosses with our two more centre lines, which gave us all of the centre lines and uh, all in the right position. So let's go back to our hole. 
which is just there. We want a centre line each side of this hole, 45 degrees. So if we look on the back, we now project this line forward and then down to the angled surface, which is there. So that's one and two and three and four. And you can see that that one and that one is equidistant from our hole. So they are in the correct position. Now the last thing I needed to do was work out how far our centre should be from this or this point. And I did that by looking at the drawing, which is just here. So I made the measurement and it came out at five millimetres. That's five millimetres from this line down. So that I can use for setting up the hub in the indexing head and getting the four holes for the four handles in the right place. Now, before we do any machining, let me take you through the operation of the indexing head. So all I'm going to do is bring you in a little bit closer so you can see the, the knobs and the dials, and then I'll take you through how it all works. We're now looking down onto the indexing head. It's really an indexing table. The table is just here, and we happen to have a chuck which is now bolted to the table and it's bolted and set up in such a way that the centre of rotation of the chuck is directly in line with the centre of rotation of the table. Now if we want to move the position of the chuck we can rotate this hand when you see if I rotate the hand in one way the chuck goes one way bring it back and it goes the other way. Now there are two scales that we can use to measure the amount of displacement in degrees that the table has made or that we're making to the table. The first scale is here, this is the course scale, and it's divided up into one degree marks along here. So each one of those marks is one degree of movement of the table and the chuck. Down on the wheel it's more complicated. It seems more complicated because this scale deals with measuring rotations in degrees and minutes and not a linear measurement. Now you notice that I have lined up the two zeros here. If I rotate the wheel clockwise, you see there's a number 30 and then its next number is a number 1 and then a number 30 and then the number 2. What we're measuring there are degrees and minutes. Now one degree can be divided up into 60 minutes. So one minute is a 60th of a degree. If I move this hand wheel one half a degree, which is just there, that's halfway between the zero and the one, you see the number 30 comes up and that denotes that the chuck has moved 30 minutes of arc. If I then move it to the one, it's now moved 60 minutes of arc, which is one degree. What makes it a little bit more complicated is the number of lines that we have here, the number of divisions. If we look at the zero, which is there on one thumb, and the one here, there are 60 minutes of arc between the one and the zero, just here. And the midway point is where it says 30. Unfortunately, the lines aren't thin enough to have 60 lines, so there are 30. So the gap between each of these lines is actually two minutes and not one minute. However, there is a little vernier here which can help you, uh, help you out to look at parts of a minute. The job we're doing on this indexing head is just drilling four holes around the periphery of our hub. Each of those holes are 90 degrees apart, so we don't have to worry about messing around with minutes of arc. So the four holes we want to drill and then tap M8 are on this sloped surface here. Now before we actually drill the holes, what we're going to need to do is get the vertical head, or the centre of the vertical head, right over the centre of our job. Now I've been through this procedure once before, it's actually in part three uh, of this series. I'll go through it quickly now, but if you want to see it in further detail, go to the end of this video, find the link for part three, and then look at it there. The way we find the centre of the job is really quite simple. The first thing we do is measure it with a micrometer, and let's say that it comes out to 50 millimetres, and if we then divide that in half, so divide by two, and that gives us 25 millimetres, which is the radius of our job here. So between the outside edge here and the centre of our job is 25 millimetres. Let's remember that. 
The next thing we do is put one of these in the vertical head. This is called a wobbler. And when this is rotating, when you bring it up to the side of the job, as the side of the boss here at the bottom becomes parallel with the job, it will kick sideways. At that point, you stop moving the head towards the job. And you know that you're exactly two and a half millimeters away from the edge of the job. Why is it two and a half millimeters? Because it's half the radius of the boss. That boss is five millimeters in diameter. So when it kicks sideways, we know that we're two and a half millimeters away from the edge of the job. That's two and a half millimeters from the center of rotation. So all we have to do is add together the two and a half millimeters and the 25 millimeters, move the head in this direction that much, and you'll bang over the center of the job. Just like that. The next thing we want to do is drill this surface here for the four handles that are going to protrude from it. Now we need to drill this M8 and there's going to be an M8 thread put onto the end of these little handles. Now the first thing we need to do is get the drill to be at the right angle to this face. It wants to be 90 degrees to that face. So what I need to do is rotate this head 20 degrees clockwise round. So let me just do that. So we're now round at 20 degrees on the scale that's shown here on the vertical head. And we can check that by using a, a little square. And if we bring the table up and across, we can check that the drill is actually at 90 degrees to our face, like that. And it's spot on. So that's good. So I know that this is at the correct angle for drilling into that face there. Now then, I've just removed the drill that was in the vertical head. That drill is the 6.8 millimeter drill we're going to be using for drilling this surface and then tapping M8. Now that drill is quite long and I wanted to make sure it was going to fit between the vertical head and our hub because our hub is off the table being held in the indexing head here. Anyway, so I put it all together, made sure that the drill fits, it does, and we can drill this surface. So I've now removed that drill and put in this long center. Now that long center is very straight and we know that it's on the rotational center of the vertical head. We also have set it up so it's on the center of our job in our Y plane, or our Y axis just here. So as far as I'm concerned, this end is set up. We now want to set up the indexing head itself. Now we do have to worry about backlash. So what we're going to do is turn the handle anti-clockwise first. Now we're going to be rotating the, the hub and drilling four positions on this slope surface. So the as it's being turned, I'm going to be turning this handle in a clockwise direction all the time so I won't get into any backlash problems. So I've now got anti-clockwise. I now stop and then start to go clockwise. So I've eliminated the backlash. I'm going to keep going to keep turning it clockwise, clockwise, clockwise until this zero comes to our pointer here. So this is the rough guide and that's getting them there roundabout there. And now I want to make sure that the zeros on this scale wheel here is in line with the zero read line, which it is just there. So our indexing head is all set up and on zero, and it's also had the backlash taken out of it as long as I move this handle in a clockwise direction. The last thing to set up is our job in the chuck. Now to set up the job in the chuck, the first thing I want to do is move this handle, which locks the chuck. So this shouldn't move uh, anymore. The part that I want to line up is this line, our construction line that we've marked on the surface here, needs to be directly under the long center that's coming out of the vertical head. To line that up I need to loosen the chuck like that and now with that loose I can now, looser, there we go, I can now rotate this around, do the chuck up now I'm looking in this direction and I can see that the center is bang over our construction line that we put on the surface of the job. So I now do this up like that. 
so everything is now in line there's one last thing to line up and that is the actual center where we want to drill so that's the next thing we have to do we have four holes to drill in the surface which are then going to be tapped m8 the construction line for the first one is shown down here earlier on we looked on the drawing and we discovered that the center of the hole needs to be five millimeters down from this edge of the slope face so i've now marked on this line here five millimeters down from that edge a line across and then I've put a center dot just there so that is the center dot and the center of our first hole now what we must do is get our center of rotation of the vertical head bang over that little center dot hole and we can do that by eye we can lift the table we will move the table in X like that and now we're going to put a socket onto the quill shaft and now we can lower the center like this and move the height and the x axis until the end of the center goes straight into the center dot that uh, i've put on there and closer and there spot on as you can see I've removed the long center now replace it with a center drill now as we bring the quill down you can see that the center drill will drill straight on top of our center dot on our job even though the indexing head is very strong and all this are big lumps of metal if we start to drill on top of our job here it will deflect slightly so what we need to do is either use um, a little jack under here or you can build it up with parallels and it just so happens that I have three parallels here that when piled on top of each other come to exactly the right height of our job and that fills the gap between the underside of our job and the table so now when I drill down on here there's no load going on to the indexing head it goes straight through the parallels to the table We have now drilled our first center hole just here. Uh, what we're going to do next is rotate our job round 90 degrees and then center drill the next face. First thing we need to do is move out of the way our parallels, undo the lock that's holding the chuck like that. Now the gear ratio for this uh, indexing head is 90 to the 1 that means that this handle has to go around 90 times for the chuck to rotate once now we want to go around a quarter of a turn 90 degrees so we don't want to turn it 90 turns we want to turn it a quarter of that so half of 90 is 45 half of 45 is 22 and a half so I'm going to turn this clockwise remember 22 and a half turns 22 and a half a turn goes just there so that's 90 degrees and we have 90 degrees shown there and we are above our next line that we have in our job here so it's looking quite good so before we start drilling our second center we need to lock the chuck like that replace our parallels under the job so that can take the the weight of the uh, of the drilling pressure so that goes under here just like that and uh, we are all ready for our second hole So all four center drills 
are now drilled. So the next thing we want to do is put the 6.8 millimeter drill in and get that centered. Now, I've just had a thought, <laughs> a dangerous thing I know, but the next thing we're gonna do is drill these holes uh, out to 6.8 millimeters so we can then tap them with the M8 tap. Now, I don't want the drill hole breaking through into the hole that we've bored in the center of our job. The quill on this milling machine is quite difficult to read. It's just up here on the, this part of the vertical head. So I've had a thought, and this thought is, instead of moving the, the head over at 20 degrees like we have done here, what we can do on this milling machine is actually tilt the table. Now, if I tilt the table at 20 degrees, put the vertical head back to vertical, once I've lined it up again, that means I should be, I will be able to drill the hole, but instead of using the quill to drill the hole, I can bring it up in Z using the, the Z wheel on the, the bottom here. So I can then bring it up and then bring it up to an exact level. And if I do it that way, then I should be able to drill down to the particular depth that I want. At least that's the idea. Hmm. Let's give it a go. Hmm. I've just, I've just come across uh, a problem and that is that with the table in this configuration I can only get to, to 10 degrees where the underside of the table bumps against the, the saddle of the milling machine. Hmm. Now I may have to twist the table a little to get more of an angle but of course that will take this out of square. I need to think about this for a while, I think. <laughs> well, it's funny how these jobs mushroom. I tried to tilt the table this way, 20 degrees, but I could only go 10 because the bottom of the table bumped against the saddle. So I brought that back level again, because the only way that I could get it further than 10 degrees was by twisting the table out of the way. And of course that would mess up all the centers. So I brought it back to level again. So the idea now is to tilt the table 20 degrees forwards like this. Uh, that I've just done, so that's set up. The next thing I'm gonna to have to do is now spin the indexing head around 90 degrees. So I can then get the, uh, the center there where we want to drill under the center of the vertical head. I've also got to get the vertical head vertical again as well. spun the indexing head around 90 degrees and uh, if I ever do this again I'm going to be doing it on a flat table and not one that I've set at 20 degrees. Uh, now I've got to set it up and get it all in line again. Right let's do that. Now I've turned the indexing head around 90 degrees I need to set it up again and I need to get the center of rotation of the chuck at 90 degrees to the x-axis of the milling machine here. Now normally I'd put a bar in the chuck and then run the clock along the edge of the bar but because the chuck is at 20 degrees I can't put the the bar in because I won't be able to clock on the side of it because it's its height is moving all the time as you go backwards and forwards. However what we can do is set the clock up on the head as I've done here and now I'm going to clock along the front face of the chuck. Now if I can get that front face in line with the x-axis uh, then that will ensure that the center of rotation is at 90 degrees to the x-axis. So let's do that. Right let's see how close we are. I'm going to bring the head forward until the arm of the gauge just touches the chuck which is doing there. I'll bring it around a turn so we get to the zero which is just there and now I'm going to move the um, the indexing head towards me 
and we can see that the clock is going clockwise which means the chuck is getting closer this end so we've got to turn the indexing head anti-clockwise slightly now I have my soft hammer the mountains on the indexing head are not very tight so I should be able to just touch this in fact let's take take the pressure off the clock and now just tap and has that moved let's uh, come forward to there and now going back so that's going anti-clockwise has come further away this is the way that we were going to start off with it's still going clockwise so I need to bring it around a little bit more let me carry on with this and then I'll bring you back okay I've been playing with this for a little while now and I think I've got it set so if I bring the the head up to the chuck here we are coming up here get it to the zero which is just there and now move it to the move the indexing head to the right as we're coming across it is still on zero we're coming away that first division is half a thou and that's so we are well within a thou for an inch of travel so i'm happy that that's accurate enough for what we want to do that's good news the indexing head is now set up again on the milling machine table now we know that the center rotation of the indexing head is at 90 degrees to the x-axis uh, of the machine and i'm happy that that's set next thing we need to do is get the center of rotation of the vertical head bang over the center of our job now we did this once before while the indexing head was 90 degrees the other way we used a wobbler to find the side of the job and then moved the uh, the table over the appropriate amount and i've done the procedure again and we are now bang over the uh, the center line uh, of the job now to set it up in y this is where the the axis that goes backwards and forwards here we need to get uh, this drill bang over the center of our hole now what i did was i i put the original center drill back in and using the the, the quill i could move the drill up and down and then using the the x uh, sorry not the x using the the y and the height wheels i got it such that the center drill plops straight into the hole without touching the sides and at that point i put the clamps on put the clamps on the y axis which is on the side of the machine here so i now know that the center of rotation of this vertical head is bang over our first hole that we want to drill let's look at this drawing again this part shows a section through the hub that contains one of the four holes that need to be tapped m8 to retain the handle stems if we measure from here to here we find it's 15 millimeters the drawing is two times full size so our holes need to be drilled 7.5 millimeters deep in the rim of the hub so we need to drill this hole 7.5 millimeters deep now what I'm going to be doing is turning the machine on the drill will start turning obviously and I will bring the table up using the Z wheel until the drill starts to drill the hole I'll keep going up and down up and down until I can see that the drill is drilling full width at that point I will then zero the Z wheel and then I can gauge how deep the drill is going by the amount that I lift the table and I'll be lifting the table 7.5 millimeters and hopefully it shouldn't break through the hole that we've drilled and bored in the front of the hub just here and one last thing we have to do before we drill the hole and that is add the parallels underneath the job to take the drilling loads from the hub straight down through to the table below just there so that is now all set up and ready to drill right let's turn this on the drill is now drilling full diameter uh, I've stopped the machine there I have zeroed the z-axis so that is now bang on zero and i've got to raise the 
table a maximum of 7.5 millimeters now this is uh, an English machine so 7.5 millimeters actually turns out to be 0.295 or 295 thou that it's got to come up uh, this machine the z-axis one rotation is a hundred thou so I've got to go around two whole turns and then plus 95 and that will give me the uh, the full 295 thou once i've drilled this hole i'll drop it back down again take the parallels out rotate the indexing head around 90 degrees and go through the same procedure again The hole is now drilled down to 7.5 millimeters which is great i've checked on the inside it hasn't broken through into our board hole in the center of our hub so that is good news so now i need to take the parallels away spin this round 90 degrees and drill another hole All four 6.8 millimeter holes have now been drilled around the periphery uh, of the hub. I've checked their depth to make sure that the drill hadn't slipped in the split collet and they are all to the correct depth so no slippage has gone on and that's good news. This material is a material that's going to be used for making the handles. Now the 6.8 millimeter holes here they will be tapped M8 and I will cut an M8 thread on the end of this bar as well to screw in. Now because we're going into a curved surface the thread will tend to be visible at the edges because they are lower than the center. So what I want to do is put a spot face on there, a face that's level and flat and that's what I'm going to be doing with this uh, cutter just here. Now this is nine millimeters in diameter, the material. The cutter here is uh, 9.5. That is, um, yeah, it's a 38 millimeter cutter it's the imperial cutter that works out at 9.52 millimeters so that will give us a nice spot face for our handle to butt up against so that's the next thing we're going to do four spot faces if i now bring this down you should be able to see a nice spot face which we can do Right, it's time to start tapping these holes M8. Unfortunately, I can't fit a center in uh, the chuck and then into the end of the tap because there's just not enough room. So what I'm gonna have to do is eye it up with my eye from each side and make sure that I go in nice and square. Now, because the hole is only seven and a half millimeters deep, I won't be able to get many turns on this tap before it bottoms out but it'll be just enough to start and I can go in with the the intermediate or the plug tap to tap down to the bottom of the hole and that seems to be going in fairly squarely I've already put cutting fluid on the tap and inside the the hole and that feels as though it's tapping really nicely yes that's good going down haven't hit there and there's the bottom of the hole so I now take this tap out replace it with the uh, intermediate let's just get that 
and this is the intermediate tap so we put that in the hole I've already put the cutting fluid on it needs to keep it vertical catch the thread that's already in the hole and it is there and now start tapping down as far as we can go until this one bottoms out in the bottom of the hole and we're at the bottom of the hole there let's take this one out and then go in with the plug tap I've blown out the hole so I know it's nice and clean right to the bottom this is the plug tap I've put cutting fluid on there already I'm just going to get this into the hole thread it in uh, this is a little bit more difficult because there's not much of a lead on this tap so I've got to line it up quite closely with the with the thread there it is and now that's going down and then we'll be able to cut the last thread right to the bottom of the hole we're still going down and now it's starting to cut there and that oh, a little bit more you've got to do this by feel it's a bit worrying because you don't want to break the tap and that's it there we're bottom of the hole so we're threaded right down to the bottom now let's take the tap out we then blast it out with air make sure all the filings are out and we can check our thread I have an M8 bolt here let's see if it screws in nicely it does look at that so that's great I now need to do the same thing and tap the M8 thread in those three other holes I will do that forthwith all four holes are now tapped and I've screwed in these bolts just temporarily to see what it would look like look at that oh what's next right it can come out of the indexing head let's loosen the chuck and let's take it out oh I need to give it a bit of a clean get rid of this oil well the bright idea I had of turning the indexing head around 90 degrees and sloping the table it did um, make the drilling of our holes a lot easier and also more accurate uh, on the depth but unfortunately it's made the video a lot longer than I wanted it to, to be however we are where we are the hub is looking good we've got our four holes all nicely tapped and we have our four spot faces on there as well we haven't got around to modifying the shape of the hole that we bored into the front but next time we we'll definitely get around to that and, uh, and with that this is the end of the video uh, could you do something like this of course you can take care everybody and I'll see you next time Could you do something like this? Of course you can. <laughs>